I'm going to start this video with a question. For a moment, try to forget everything you know about Kylo Ren or Ben Solo and anything you may know about the Solo kids from the old expanded universe. What would you envision the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia to be like? Would it look anything like the awkward, oftentimes almost robotic sounding Kylo Ren we see in The Force Awakens? I mean, Han Solo is easily the most charismatic character in the entire Star Wars universe, though Lando may have a thing or two to say about that. And Princess Leia is not only a great politician and leader of the Rebellion, but she is a woman full of wit and spirit herself, and isn't afraid to say exactly what's on her mind, no matter who she's talking to or how much trouble it could get her into. So how did they end up with a son that seems so socially inept like Ben Solo? Now, I'm going to try to touch on a few different possibilities here. Maybe I'll be onto something with some of them, or maybe Ben Solo was just a weird kid growing up, and I'm looking for something where there's nothing. I don't know. But I can't believe that I'm the only one that finds the way he acts, and especially speaks, to be odd, and would border on poor writing or even poor acting, if Adam Driver hadn't, in my opinion at least, done such a brilliant job with this character, and made us all know that this is just the way Kylo is. First, and this is obvious, but there is a war going on inside of this young man. A war between the darkness and the light for the allegiance of one so gifted with the Force. I say this often, and I could be wrong and you can disagree with me if you like, but Kylo Ren or Ben Solo will be as much of a main character in this trilogy going forward as Rey. I fully expect whatever side he ultimately chooses to be the winning side of this trilogy, unless of course he ends up Grey, which is a strong possibility. Now, I think one possible reason for his awkwardness is he's just trying to keep it all together, trying so hard to keep the storm inside of him at bay and to manage and function as a person. He tells Han, his father, that he's being torn apart, and I think that's true, and keeping himself together takes a literal conscious effort. However, every time something goes wrong, he can't keep it in check. The dam breaks and the dark side swells up in him, charging his emotions and causing him to have his crazy outburst that we see a couple times in The Force Awakens. On the flip side, however, when Kylo is mind-probing Rey at Starkiller Base and starts to see just how sad and alone this girl has been, to feel the loneliness and isolation that he also feels inside of himself, albeit in a different way, the light side starts to take a hold of him. The compassion starts to come out. In the novelization of The Force Awakens, Snoke even says to Kylo that he believes it was compassion for her that caused the mind probe to fail, but might there be even more to it than that? Was it this compassion that allowed Rey to then turn the tables on Kylo so that she could read his mind and maybe even begin to see how sad and alone he also was? She then says to him the one thing that'll make him doubt and question everything, that you are afraid that you will never be as strong as Darth Vader. And I believe that this is Kylo's greatest fear not simply because he may never be that powerful, but because he is giving up so much, his friends and his family, just for the attempt to become that powerful, and he's not sure it'll all be worth it in the end. And I'd also wager that the dark side within him, as well as Snoke and maybe even a remnant of Darth Vader himself, which I'll get to in a minute on how that's even possible, is telling him that if he just commits fully to the dark path, he will become that powerful and nothing else will matter. So what exactly is pulling on Kylo Ren? Is it as simple as the dark side and the light? Probably not, though I do think these two abstract parts of the Force are certainly playing a role. In the Aftermath books, we learn that Leia can feel a shadow hanging over her son even before his birth, which is likely somehow Snoke. I make that assumption simply because in the novelization of The Force Awakens, Leia even says that Snoke has always been watching their son from the shadows. Now I think there are two other factors that are pulling on Kylo to the dark, but neither comes into play until later in his life. Again I go to the Aftermath books, in particular the newest one, Empire's End, where we learn that Sith can apparently leave a dark side imprint on the living force after their death, and that it usually affixes itself to an item like a mask or a helmet that they possessed. I think that at some point after Ben Solo learns that his grandfather was Darth Vader, which thanks to the book Bloodline we know isn't until roughly six years before the events of The Force Awakens, that he either seeks out Vader's helmet or more likely has it presented to him by Snoke. I think that the helmet then starts to show him visions of who and what Darth Vader was exactly and just how powerful he was. And I don't know about you, but all I'd have to be shown is that hallway scene from the end of Rogue One to know I wanted to be just like that guy. Seriously though, I fully believe that the helmet is showing him visions, and when we see Kylo Ren all but begging the helmet to show him again the power of the darkness, this is because, going along with what I said earlier, Kylo wants to know that the dark path is the right path for him. He wants to know it'll all be worth giving up everything else in his life for this kind of power. He wants to know he'll be like Vader in that hallway someday, and he needs to make a final choice soon because he can no longer stand being torn apart. Going back to the other side now, what do I think is pulling Kylo Ren to the light, other than just the light side itself of course? Well, of course Luke and Leia are, 
But the real question is, does Ben Solo, before he becomes Kylo, receive visits from any of the Force ghosts? Did he even commune with Anakin Skywalker, perhaps? Now the odd part is, as I mentioned before, Ben Solo growing up didn't know that Darth Vader was his grandfather, which means he wouldn't know that Anakin Skywalker was once Darth Vader, though he'd still know that Anakin had been his grandfather. I know that sounds a tad confusing, but I'm pretty sure you know exactly how that story goes. Nevertheless, the Force Ghost could be a strong factor pulling him to the light. And how amazing would it be to have a scene, in flashback, of Anakin Skywalker's Force, Force Ghost speaking to Ben Solo right after he's become Kylo Ren, telling him he's going down the wrong path. I also think there's one other factor pulling Kylo back to the light, that being Rey. Now, I've said before that I don't think this trilogy is going to be a simple case of Kylo on the dark side versus Rey on the light side. And yes, you could argue that traditionally Star Wars has always been about the simple battle of good versus evil. But I think, whether you like it or not, Disney is taking Star Wars into a new, more gray direction. This is evident not only by the introduction of such things as the Bendu and Rebels, which is a true neutral force user, but I also cite a line in Aftermath Empire's End that said, All hail the light, the dark, and the gray which I'm almost positive is the first time that the Grey has been outright referred to in the new canon. Anyway, so how is Rey pulling Kylo to the light, which does sound a little ridiculous? Well, first, I don't think she's aware she's doing it. It's not like some type of conscious effort on her part, at least not yet. And I know there are about a million different theories out there about how Kylo Ren seems to know who Rey is, which explains that what girl line in the movie and the it is you line in the book when she pulls the saber to her over him. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into my own theories about how he knows who she is, but to sum it up as quickly as I can, I think it's a little more than Kylo or Ben has been seeing Rey in Force Visions maybe for a good part of his life, though it may be of her when she's young or obscured in some way. Otherwise, the first time he sees her on Takodana, he'd likely know exactly who she was. Or perhaps he does recognize her, but just can't believe she's just a scavenger and not something more. Because why would he be seeing just a, a scavenger in his visions all these years? Not to mention, if he had been seeing Rey in Force Visions, it's not like he'd flat out tell her the first time he met her that, hey, I've been seeing visions of you my whole life. That sounds more like an Anakin-type pickup line to me. Personally, I believe Rey and Kylo's fates are intertwined, and that we will see some type of relationship grow between them as the movies go on. Maybe a reluctant one at first by both parties, who likely utterly hate each other at this moment, that turns into anything from two siblings or cousins finding and saving each other, to just some type of mutual respect or friendship that starts some type of new order devoted to the Force, to something far more than friendship that leads to the new hero we'll see in episode 10 someday, if you know what I mean. Now I think there is one other possibility for Kylo's awkwardness. Maybe he hasn't always been this way. Maybe this is something new since his fall to the dark side. I again point to what we learned about Sith masks in Aftermath Empire's End, about how they have some remnant of the Sith they once belonged to still attached to them. What if Kylo's helmet once belonged to a very powerful ancient Sith and was given to him when he joined or became master of the Knights of Ren? We know that the Acolytes of the Beyond, who are a group of dark side fanatics that collect Sith artifacts, likely become the Knights of Ren, or the Knights of Ren are a special division of their order, if you will. Now, the highest honor that can be bestowed upon an Acolyte of the Beyond is to receive an ancient Sith mask. Just a guess, but this may be even what elevates them to knight status. It would only make sense then that the Master of the Knights would be presented with the most powerful of the Sith masks they own, wouldn't it? The ancient Sith may even have been named Ren, though I know a lot of people think Kylo Ren is the name Ben Solo created for himself, and very well could be. Furthermore, what's curious about these masks is that when they are worn, they seem to imbue the wearer with dark side power or allow them to be, in a sense, possessed by the remnant of the Sith it once belonged to. This happens to a girl named Kaiza who is given a mask before an attack carried out by the Acolytes of the Beyond. Though she once had her doubts about the Acolytes, being a part of it mostly because of a guy she liked, after she puts on the mask, she is overcome with hate and goes on to cut down enemies with ease and delight, even though before she put the mask on, she had planned to stick to the back and only pretend to be fighting, hoping no one would notice. So this begs the question, if these masks hold such great dark side power, enough to turn an average girl, they made a point of saying that she was not force sensitive at all, into a proficient stone cold killer. And if Kylo's mask belonged not only to an ancient Sith, but an extremely powerful one at that, does he, not to make it sound like a video game, get a power boost when he wears his mask? Is there any proof of this? Actually, there may be quite a bit. Let's do some compare and contrast real quick. At the start of the movie, when Kylo is wearing his mask, Poe takes a shot at him, 
but he has the power not only to sense it before it hits him, but to freeze it in midair, something we've never seen before. Later on, when not wearing his mask, Chewbacca takes a shot at him and he fails to either sense it or stop it, and we know he should have had the ability to do both. However, I will admit Kylo seemed to be having a moment after killing his father, so that could explain why he failed to sense it or stop it. Okay, now the first time Kylo mind probes Rey and Takodana, he is wearing his mask and she is completely unable to resist him. The next time he mind probes her at Starkiller Base, he isn't wearing his mask and she not only resists him, but reads his mind in return. When Han Solo confronts Kylo at the end of the movie, he only starts to break down and open up to his father after he takes the mask off, which is when he admits that he's being torn apart and he wants his father to help him do what he must. Now, for those of you who think it was his plan to kill Han all along, I point out that J.J. Abrams has said that he didn't believe Kylo had fully made up his mind until he actually killed Han. So when he was ready to give it all up and give away his saber, he may have fully intended to do that, to walk away from the path of the dark side. Not to mention he didn't need to lure Han and give him a false hope to kill him. He could have easily killed Han at any time, unless he just wanted to be cruel about it, which is certainly possible. Okay, now let's move on to the final duels against Finn and Rey, where he again isn't wearing his mask. Now to be honest, I think there are a lot of possibilities for why Kylo seems to struggle against these two. First, we know he's not only injured, but he's been shot by a bowcaster, a weapon that has pretty much decimated everyone else that's been hit by it in the movie. Second, though I think he wants to kill Finn, I think he wants to toy with the traitor a bit first, and if he really wanted to, he could kill him at almost any point. After all, right after Finn lands a blow on his shoulder, Kylo Ren almost immediately disarms him and slices open his back, which to me says it just took a little bit of anger for him to stop playing around and get serious. I, f I think the same goes for the duel against Rey. If he really wanted to, he could have killed her at any point. However, there are two possibilities for why he doesn't. First, and the most obvious and probably the right answer, he doesn't want to kill her. He wants to take her on as an apprentice and trainer. He even offers to show her the ways of the Force. And this isn't done out of the kindness of his heart, but rather because he knows she's powerful and he wants to use her, like Snoke has been using him. Now, when it all goes sideways for Kylo, and Rey lets the Force flow through her, or whatever happens at the end of their duel when she turns the tide on him, and I'll give you a fun theory about that in a second, this is when he wishes he had his mask on, because it's gone from a simple recruitment to a sheer battle for survival, and he's not powerful enough to stop whatever is happening to her without his mask to give him that little extra edge. Now, as promised, I'll leave you with one last crazy theory that I don't think will turn out to be right, but could actually answer some of the biggest mysteries left over from The Force Awakens. So if dark side users can leave imprints on the living force, can light side users do the same? What if Anakin has left some type of imprint on his old saber, or more specifically, the kyber crystal within? Now, everywhere in the new canon lately, we've been learning more and more about these crystals and their importance. In the Ahsoka novel that recently came out, we even learned that they have some type of intelligence, or are even sentient in a sense. They also have a special bond with Jedi, choosing their eventual masters and even calling out to them so that they can be used to create their sabers. And a little side note, dark side users have to steal and bend a kyber crystal to their will to create a saber, corrupting it and causing it to bleed, hence the red blade. So what if the saber chose Rey over Kylo because Anakin, who was still somehow either a part of that saber, having left an imprint on it, or as a force ghost was somehow able to act through it because of his connection to the crystal within it, chose Rey over Kylo. What if what possessed her at the end of their fight was somehow the remnants of Anakin Skywalker, or, though highly unlikely, his force ghost, who then helped put a beat down on his grandson? It would also explain much of the force vision she had when she touched the saber the first time, that it was Anakin showing her all these things about his family, or maybe even their family. I know this is all highly unlikely, but there just might be something to all this. I think all that we're learning about kyber crystals is leading somewhere, and maybe it's to this. Maybe after Kylo killed Han, Anakin from the beyond gave up all hope on his grandson and now believes he needs to be destroyed before he becomes too dangerous, something Anakin would know a thing or two about. Now, a lot of people think Rey went dark side on Kylo at the end of their fight, and that's what helped her win it. I'm not opposed to that theory at all, in fact it makes more sense than what I'm proposing here, but what if Anakin was trying to help Rey defeat and kill Kylo at the end because, as an expert in such matters, Anakin knew Kylo had gone too far down the dark path to be saved. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Have I gone too far down the dark path with some of these thoughts and theories? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. Also, please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one and about all things Star Wars to come. If you're already a subscriber, then thanks for your continued support. 
If you want to know when I upload new videos, then hit the notification button or follow me on Twitter. And as always, thank you for watching.